Hello and welcome back to our RTS tutorial series. Hopefully you guys have been liking these videos and um, making this video. Actually, we just got an upgrade to the ECS package. So I'm going to quickly walk how we're going to update this. Um, this is 0 0.0.21 and <clears throat> you can read this in the in the uh, GitHub. But the main thing is the rendering logic has been moved to the hybrid renderer. Um, so at mesh instance render got moved to render mesh. So, um, oh, and I think the final thing is systems that use barrier system create command buffer, um, which I believe we do, um, we'll have to call this add job handle for procedure. So I'll show you how we'll do that and things we'll need to do, but um, just want to keep you guys in the loop. So with that, um, upgrading the ECS is pretty simple. We just go to package manager, and it should show, yeah, so we have entities here, and it, oh, we have entities here, and it shows that there's an upgrade available, and then now we have this new <clears throat> hybrid renderer. So we're going to want to update these two, or update this one and install this one. So once you finish updating your packages, you're going to need to add two lines to your manifest. Um, that you can find that under packages manifest in your project file uh, so and I'll have this in the description of the YouTube video but basically you have to add this test performance framework on the second line make sure to add a comma so it doesn't give any error and then add this new one after dependencies uh, testables and com test framework if you're using 2019 um, this sh I believe this is not a problem, but on the Unity forums, it seems like if you have 2018.3 uh, or later, you will need to do that fix. If everything upgraded correctly and um, we're looking good, you should have still two more errors. That's completely normal. Uh, that's due to the uh, the mesh instance renderer in our RTS Bootstrap, um, which is how we get you know use the Q prototype and things like that. Um, that method is, we're not going to use that method anymore. We're going to have to do a new method. Luckily, um, they got rid of some of, um, well, not luckily, they got rid of their examples, but they have a new example um, and re removed all the others, and they have a new way of spawning um, cubes. It's uh, it's using the job, and you have this new type of component, which is I shared component data. And we can just throw a game object prefab in there, which we then can just add on our own outside. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this way, and we're going to make two new scripts. It's going to be unit spawn component, and then it's going to be, um, so we're going to make that component, and then we're going to have unit spawn system. These are the two new things uh, instead of RTS Bootstrap. So let's go ahead and go to RTS Bootstrap, and I'm just going to do Control K, Control C. Uh, well, you probably want to do Control A to highlight everything, Control K, Control C to comment out everything, because we're not going to use this anymore. Then we're going to go into our unit spawn component, uh, copy the <coughs> the Unity one, and we're just going to call this unit spawner, and we'll just get rid of some of this stuff. I think I named it spawn, but we'll go with spawner, and I'll change that later. Uh, so I sh shared component data. This is like kind of a new way of doing it, and this wrapper shared component allows us to use unit spawner component in the Unity editor, um, as well as the serializable. So you need these two to, to make it compatible with, um, with Unity. So now I'm going to go into hello spawn a cube, and I'm going to type in and get the spawner system and just going to copy this whole thing and we'll make changes to this as necessary so um, let's go unit spawn system there we go um, change it to unit and then we'll go unit here so uh, now in my systems it has been all job components um, let me find a system here player input system has been job components because most of the data did not need to run on the main thread um, we just need to pass in components however with this new spawn system it will need to run on the main thread completely so component systems run on the main thread 
use this when you have to do work that cannot be called from a job. Um, so right here on Create Manager, we create our kind of filter. So it takes in the unit spawner and the position. And it's going to filter all the entities that do not have these two components. Um, some of you might be familiar with this using statement. Um, this, this statement was used in the Unite technical presentation. Um, all it does is this statement cleans up itself. You don't need to deallocate or do anything. Um, this is a C-sharp statement, but this um, converts your component group into an entity array so that you can call a for each on it. Over here, grab our prefab from our new component of unit spawner. So you can see that we just get shared component data, call the prefab, um, create our, instantiate our entity with our new prefab, um, and then we copy the position of our spawner and we set it to the entity. So if we move our spawner somewhere else, we don't have to worry about the entities being out of sync or anything. They will automatically get that position. And this nifty little destroy entity, um, destroy the spawner so this system only runs once. So if you have a spawner system that like, you know, League of Legends where you're constantly spawning minions, you probably don't want to destroy this, but if you're just making one character, one to three characters or whatever, um, you just you just want this spawn your units destroy it so it doesn't run again um, so hopefully this all should work um, let's go back and see it compile so let's make some editor changes first let's change this to spawner and then unit spawner component uh, so that it shows up in the editor otherwise we're gonna have the wrong class name mismatch um, and we're not going to need the cube prototype anymore up here. So just go ahead and delete that and let's make a new empty object and call it unit spawner. And we're going to add our new unit spawn component. And you're going to see that it's going to take a prefab game object. Um, so I created a player unit archetype, uh, prefab, which, um, all it is is just a render mesh component um, with our cube and our player unimat that we had. So cube and then our yellow player unimat. Um, if you've been following this this tutorial, a position component and this interesting copy initial transform from game object. So what this is, is it'll copy its transform and set it to based on the game object it's attached to. So this saves it from having to manually edit everything in code. If you do it that way, that's fine, but this is just <clears throat> an easy helper function. So I just have that, and in my unit spawner, I can just add my unit, oh, wrong one. Let's go assets, player unit archetype. And our system, remember our player, um, our unit spawner system takes a unit spawner and a position. So we need to also add a position component, which is by unity. And then we're going to get that copy initial transform from game object. <clears throat> there we go. And so if we press play, and there we have it. Uh, we're spawning our player unit again um, <laughs> back at step one. Uh, well, really like step zero because we had three units. But <clears throat> now that we've upgraded and we can use the separate packages, um, we can continue on the course. Um, I, I really wanted to do this because it seemed like a big change. Uh, normally I wouldn't upgrade unless um, there's a big change, but I don't want us further down the line to have to make uh, massive changes. Um, so now we're back at step one. Let's quickly um, set up our scene to make be RTS-like, move the camera, and all that good stuff. So let's just quickly Make it look like an RTS scene, plain. Let's zero it out. Name it ground and then scale it by just 10 on the axis. And then uh, I'm actually going to press play to make it easier to position the camera. So we'll go up a little bit, back, press E to rotate, rotate it down, go up, back a little bit. Uh, since it's an orthographic, maybe set to 11, go even further back, and that should be good. Um, we'll have to raise our guy a little bit. It will rotate just a little bit more. There we go. And 
one nice thing is you can just do click this, copy component, and once you're here, we'll just paste component values. So our camera is good, and we'll set our unit spawner to one since the scale of the unit will be one. Once we press play, we should see our unit. Good. Oh, it's a little large because <laughs> we forgot to change the orthographic, but once we set that to 11, should be good to go. Okay, great. And since I don't want to make this video too long, um, we'll just get right into making the movement system. Uh, that's a nice uh, small system. So let's do player unit movement system. Everyone's going to use it, not only the player unit, but just in case we make you know, a different unit system in the future, a different movement system for different things, we um, might want to just call it like this for now. So uh, as we're familiar with before, we make a job. It's job component system, and it's going to be the using unity entities. And then we need to make our job. So let's make a public struct player movement Let's keep it consistent. Player unit movement job. That's going to extend I job process component data. And we are going to, it's going to, it needs a player input and it needs to have a position. It's not letting me have a position. Let's see. Uh, transforms. So all the um, Unity ECS stuff is under Unity Transforms. So now it's a position. Uh, remember, this filters all of it. Right now, uh, all our components will move at the same time together because everything everyone's going to have a player input position. In the next video, we're going to add a select system that adds and removes select, and then that way we can filter easily. Filter we only want to move ones that are selected, um, and you can add your own filters as you want. That's the uh, the benefit of the sweet job system. So let's uh, let's make our execute. Actually, it's probably going to complain here and just implement that. Okay. So you can see we have player input, CO, and position. So remember, you always need to reference everything you filtered in, even if you don't use it. Um, so I'm just going to do P input, so we're not don't get confused with all these names and position. Okay, cool. So this is actually going to be a really simple. We're going to do if input, uh, if player input, if they right clicked, then we're just going to set our position value to the input of wherever the mouse position was. And that's it. It's actually all we need for our movement system. And this kind of shows like how useful um, ECS can be and how quick you can once you once you get out through all the boilerplate how easy it is to just kind of write so now we just need to make our on update and I'm sure this one will just implement abstract class so on update it's up here um, so far most people have just put it down here which I agree with so I'm just gonna put it down here <clears throat> so on update our job equals new player unit movement job and since this isn't taking anything, we don't need to pass in anything. Then we're just going to return job, schedule it. We're going to pass in our system, which is this. And we're going to pass in the input steps. And we're done. So let's quickly test this. Now if I right click, it should not follow. <laughs> I actually think we forgot to, in our player unit archetype, we probably forgot to put in our player input component. Yes, so easy debugging. Player input component, it's not showing up. Oh, so I didn't expose this to the editor um, since our update. So let's quickly go into here. Actually, instead of typing all this out, we have it already in our unit spawner component. So we need the serializable. Let's add that there. And we need this, uh, this shared component data wrapper, which exposes it in the Unity editor. So let's go here. Well, let's add it down here, but name it player input component. And it's going to take a player input. And we probably just need to add using system. 
Okay, cool. Uh, oh, uh, too much copy pasting. <laughs> get us in trouble sometimes so it's an I component data uh, not shared component data so now that should work then we'll go here and let's go to our player unit archetype open prefab then we can add our player input component now it's exposed and you can see it has a mouse position which we won't edit um, so if we press play Now what's actually going to happen is it's just going to disappear when we right click. And so that happened. If we go into the entity debugger and we look at our player unit movement system, click on the player unit, we see we have one entity, so we know we're filtering correctly. And we see the mouse position is way off screen. This is because it's using um, screen coordinates and it's not translating to world coordinates correctly. So our unit entity is somewhere far off. In a distant land let's quickly see why that is um, and now we can easily break that down we don't have to do a lot of searching we know it's a problem with the player input system so let's go into player input system and so we cast our array and we set the mouse position so it should be working oh so it looks like we have this input mouse position so we don't actually use this mouse position and that is most likely the reason okay get back in there then when we press play we should accurately be ray casting against the ground there we go so it's working good um, they're ray casting a little bit inside um, because the units height um, we should probably fix that um, I have a the quick hack is to on the y-axis we know the height of the unit is one. Eventually, if you have different units for different heights, probably want to use that, um, depending on how your game works. But for now, we know we want it to be above the unit, or sorry, the ground. So there we go. And so now he follows us wherever we go, um, and that's looking good. So in the next video, let's tackle select system and uh, multiple units and only moving if you click left click and then click right click instead of just everybody following the same one so hopefully you guys have been liking these videos and i'll see you in the next one